should not have brought that stone into my presence. Prepare yourself for oblivion, patron! What do we have here? A dog? I haven't seen a dog for ages. But then again, I've been asleep for that long. Hello, boy. I'm Sama. How'd you get in here? Did you come with the Sartan forces from the other realms? This dog is no dog. It is a vessel for another's soul. The soul of a patron. We found no other Sartan, no rescue forces. All we discovered were the charred remains of one man and these items. Friends, we have a very unusual situation. Our ward has fallen. This roused us from our slumber as predicted. But instead of greeting the Sartan rescue forces as we expected, all we find is a dog carrying a patron's soul. We need answers, and the only source is this patron. While he exists inside of the dog, he cannot communicate. I suggest that we restore the patron to his original form so that we can question him. A patron here? To our very heart? Have you forgotten that the patrons are our mortal enemies? I say leave him in the dog's body. Soon he'll forget he ever was a patron, and he'll be no threat to us. Do you know what is happening out there? Where are our fellows? Why is this patron here? How long have we slept? It is very possible that the patrons have been rehabilitated as intended. Perhaps this is our rescuer. Is this how you would treat such a guest? No. We shall restore him, and we shall have our questions answered then. 
It is the only way. Whatever you might think of me, Councilman, I am no fool. You may prepare the nullification element. We will administer it to the patron after he is restored. What have you done to me, Sartan? You've taken my magic away! Calm, my friend. What we have done is temporary, and for your protection as much as ours. You have imbibed some nullified water. This eliminates all of your magical possibilities. While you cannot bring any possibilities into this reality, neither can any be placed upon you. This means that although you cannot cast any spells, you are invulnerable to others' magic as well. You have been nullified. It will continue for only as long as we need to question you. Now let us begin. Who are you? Why are you here? How did you get into the city? I'm not talking. I hope you reconsider. In you lies the key to this mystery, and we need it. May I remind you that you are helpless. I do not want to resort to threats, but we must be frank with each other. Time is short. You just told me that I'm invulnerable to your magic, so what do I have to fear? Ah, that is true. But the nullification effect won't stop a spear. Get my point. Aren't you the same Sama who originally sundered the world? Who banished my people into the labyrinth? Yes, I am that. I know that you can't understand this, but it was all necessary. It was part of a larger plan. I'll explain everything after you tell me what you know. I've seen your plan in action. You couldn't have done more damage to more lives if you tried. I'm starting to get that impression, although I am loath to believe it. If you would tell me your story, I would understand much better. Do you know how long you've been sleeping? Not really. I'm starting to think that it may have been much longer than I intended. You've been asleep for over 2,000 years. 2,000 years? How is that possible? You must tell me what has happened. This just keeps getting more confusing. Why should I trust you? I'm not sure why you shouldn't. I don't even know if we should be enemies. I'm relying on you to tell me this. I'll make you this promise. If you are honest and forthright with me, I will respond to you in kind. I'll answer any questions you have. Now please, tell me what you know. All right, Sartan. You want the truth? I'll give it to you. If you kill me, others will follow. Even now, our army outnumbers that of the surviving Sartan. 
I've seen your forces. I know where they are, and I know that my lord will destroy them effortlessly. You can't win! I have much to say about what you have told me. Your people, you have been wronged. I wish I could change what has happened, but I cannot. It seems that we took on far too much. We thought we were gods, that we were infallible. We weren't. And both of our races have paid the price. However insane you think it might have been, there was a purpose to the plan. We tried to create worlds in which the Mensch would thrive once they were united and the realms were interconnected. What your lord seeks to do is collect all of the seal pieces to reform the original world. He doesn't understand what this means. His efforts will result in the death of many of the Mensch left alive in the new realms. Perhaps he does understand. By decimating the opposing force even before the war is joined, he ensures his success I'm not sure the Mensch left alive will enjoy the slavery he undoubtedly plans for them. What he may not realize is that this will affect his own race as well. Many of his people will die in the Reformation. Do you think he would risk that? Sama. I'm not sure about your plan, but perhaps the Reformation isn't the correct path. I'll return to my lord and discuss it. For now, I'll leave your sealed piece here. <sighs> I'm very glad that you see things this way. I hope that we can begin a new era of peace together. Go back to your lord. Tell him that I will gladly speak with him. But I have one important question before you go. What exactly happened to Sandrax after you escaped from him? Thank you, Patron, for painting such a vivid picture of all of the worlds, including your own. That lovely place called the Labyrinth, definitely a realm after my own heart. You see, I feed on fear and chaos, and I can't see a better way to produce such things than by allowing your lord to proceed with his plan. However, since you appear to have lost your nerve, I'll have to take your place. Your lord trusts you, does he not? Especially when you are doing what he wants. I shall take your ship, go to the Nexus, and deliver this seal piece to him. I'm guessing that it will complete his collection. Then I shall lead him to the Vortex, where he can perform the Rite of Reformation. I'm so sorry you decided to turn against your lord. I'm sure that he doesn't view traitors in a very good light. I do hope you won't die in the ensuing chaos, all of you. I'd love to meet you again. We have much to discuss, and an eternity of pain during which we can discuss it. Why wasn't I affected by the dragon's aura of fear? It sure had me in its grasp last time I encountered it. That's because you had been nullified. Remember, nullifying water eliminates your vulnerability to magic as well as your ability to cast spells. Sangdrax's aura of fear didn't affect you because no magic could affect you. Can't you stop Sangdrax? No, I'm afraid not. 
His magic is too powerful for us to oppose. When we first arrived here, we built this city and placed the mench inside the other sea moons, stone enclosed islands much like this one. Shortly thereafter, Sangdrax appeared. We don't know where he came from. Unprovoked, he launched an attack against us. He never destroyed us all, just killed a few people. But it was enough to keep us scared and confused. We never had a chance to defeat him. He commands some form of magic that is foreign to us, more powerful than the rune-based magic that we use. We erected the ward around the city as a last-ditch effort against him. Evidently, it worked. The ward was designed to keep out all foreign magic. Since he consisted almost entirely of pure magic, he could not enter. We decided to enter our sleep capsules. We expected that when the others had learned that we were in danger, they would gather here to help us defeat Sangdrax. We keyed our awakening to occur when the ward had fallen, assuming that it would happen only when the other Sartan had arrived. We never dreamed that thousands of years would pass before the ward fell. Now that it has, Sangdrax is loose. Not only is he a threat to us, but with your ship, he has access to all of the worlds. And if he succeeds in causing the Reformation, we'll all probably die in the process anyway. You know, Zifnab gave me a stone to use against some ultimate evil. Do you think this might prove effective against Sangdrax? I don't know. Tell me about it. It sounds like this might be some other kind of magic. Perhaps made from the same source that created Sangdrax himself. It may be that Sangdrax is vulnerable to it. Where is it? I didn't see it along with your possessions. Sangdrax got hold of the stone and tossed it into a pile of rocks which look exactly like it. I don't have a clue which one it is. I'm afraid I can't help you there. I never saw the stone to begin with, so I wouldn't be any help in finding it now, lost among similar rocks. I do hope you're able to get it back, though. Judging from the way Sangdrax reacted to it, it sounds as if that stone is our only hope to defeat the dragon. If that's so, why didn't you all tank up with the water and go after him? His magic wouldn't do a thing against you. Uh, this is true, although we would be helpless as well as invulnerable. While the water was in effect, we would not be able to use our magic against Sangdrax. We could only confront him physically. He can choose any form. In a purely physical battle, he would destroy us hands down. How did Sangdrax take my form? That's one of his powers. He can assume the form of anyone or anything he desires. The talent renders him insidious as well as invincible. Where is Sangdrax leading, my lord? The Vortex? Yes. The Vortex is the one place that the Reformation ritual can be enacted. It is where we originally sundered the world. It's also the only place where the interconnection can begin. Where is the Vortex? The only place from which the Vortex can be entered is in the Labyrinth. We reasoned that this would be the safest place to hide the portal. It may be that your lord will balk at traveling the length of the Labyrinth again the wrong way, but Sangdrax can be very persuasive. He will convince him, one way or another. What exactly is the interconnection? We designed the realms to work together. Each had specific functions to perform in the overall plan. The interconnection was to tie all of the worlds together. Abarak would produce raw materials. Arianus would take those materials and refine them to produce manufactured goods. Prion would supply power to the other worlds. Celestra was to provide a place for most of the people to live and purify some of the toxins from the other worlds, notably Abarak. The realms were never designed to survive on their own for an extended time. And yet, that's exactly what they've had to do. It's not too late, though. From what you've told me, Abarak is dying. The interconnection is the only thing that can save it. It's the only alternative to Reformation. How do you start the interconnection? Much like the Reformation, it requires all five of the seal pieces. In the center of the vortex is a floating island. It has four spires. Each spire represents an element. Air, fire, 
stone, and water. The seal pieces must be placed upon each corresponding spire. Then the spell itself must be ignited. This is done by placing the focus over the correct rune and inserting the nexus seal piece into it. Spires? Focus? What are you talking about? Well, you did ask. The floor of the island is laid out with many interconnecting runes. Each rune can be used to ignite a distinct spell. Depending on the rune you choose, the function of the spell will be different. The Reformation requires that the spell be ignited from one particular rune, the interconnection another. The focus is a hexagonal frame that floats over the island's floor. You can move it over the rune of your choice. When you place the nexus seal piece inside of it, the focus automatically ignites the rune under it, which casts the spell. Which is the starting rune for the interconnection spell? It would be too difficult to describe. Though I will tell you that we left the focus over that rune. We intended to return and ignite the interconnection spell someday. Let's back up a step. Certainly. Do you have another ship that I can use to pursue him? Yes, certainly. In fact, as we've been speaking, I've had another ship placed in the same port where you landed. You're welcome to it. There is, however, one problem. We seem to be a little short on steering stones. It takes quite a while to magically prepare a stone sphere to accept the naming runes that guide a ship through the Death Gate. The only such stone we have is the ceremonial globe in this very chamber, and you can't use that. Don't you think saving the worlds is worth sacrificing your precious ceremonial globe? Not at all. You see, the globe was placed in this room before the building's construction was complete. It's too large to fit through any of the exits. It's also far too heavy to move any distance by hand. You're welcome to it if you can find a way to transport it. But then, it doesn't have any of the naming runes on it anyway. I don't think that the globe is the solution to this problem. Could we talk a little about the other worlds? Very well. Do you know who Zifnab is? I know of no Zifnab, but I doubt that is his true name. He sounds like a valuable ally if he knows as much as you say and has access to magic outside of our mastery. Why'd you react so strongly when I told you about necromancy? Necromancy was banned for many reasons soon after it was discovered. The most important reason being that when someone dead is raised, someone else will die untimely. This maintains the balance. By relying on necromancy, the people of Aberact have doomed our race. The magic doesn't recognize the boundaries of the realms. It kills Sartan as far away as Arianus and Priam. It wiped out thousands. Why is everyone here alive and well? <laughs> it's actually ironic. The war that we constructed to repel the magic of Sangdrax must have had the effect of repelling the magic of necromancy as well. It kept us alive against two dangers. But now, we only have hundreds of people left, where once we had tens of thousands. We shall try to reconstruct our lives, to help our brethren on Abarak, if there is a world left to live on. Let's go back a step. Certainly. I don't have time for talk. Now's the time for action. Very well. If I can be of any further assistance, do not hesitate to ask. Hello again. I don't have time. Very well. Thank you.
Hello again. I don't have time. Very well. You don't need to give me anything, my friend. You might need all of your possessions to face the perils ahead. Hello? I don't have... Very well.
Bye.